Our scripture reading today is Psalm 32, verses 1 through 11. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me, my strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity, I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all who are faithful offer prayer to you, at a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me, you preserve me from trouble, you surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go, I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule, without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. This is the word of God to live and share. Thanks be to God. In Rolling Stones magazine in March 2011, they had this article, this list of people who were considered the best songwriters of all time. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't make the list. <laughs> but anyway, in this list of great songwriters, they were on the list because they were prolific songwriters. They were songwriters that made it way high in the billboards. Okay. They were songwriters also that really transformed times in history. But okay. In this list, uh, we're going to look at it from number 10 down. And, okay. and number 10 was a guy named Bernie Tappan, and he was a songwriter for Elton John. Wow. And he made number okay. 10 on the list. Number 9 was Elton John himself. Okay. Number 8 was one of my all-time favorites, Joni Mitchell. And Joni Mitchell. And I just Mitchell. love yeah. Joni Mitchell. And then there was Paul Simon at number 7 and Mick Jagger at number 8. And number 5 was Neil Young. Paul McCartney, I'm surprised mm -hmm. he didn't make it a little higher, but he was number 4. Okay. But then there was Bruce Springsteen at number 3. Okay. Da, 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 da. Number two was John Lennon. Wow. And okay. do you know who they put as number one? Now yeah. I have a little trouble with this one, but I, I don't quite understand it. But the one who actually made number one was Bob Dylan. Wow. Bob Dylan. Bob yeah. Dylan. Hmm. Um, and I don't agree with this list too much. Um, and I, I think it's not that I wouldn't have this list the same, except I think I'd put Bob Dylan at number two and then move them all down one because there was a songwriter who was even greater than that. And we're going to be looking at him today. And that songwriter was King David. Mm. And King David was great because he wrote one of the most well-known songs throughout all of history. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that song is? He wrote a lot of psalms, but I think the one that is the most popular uh, is The Lord is My Shepherd. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's it. David wrote all kinds of songs, and we call them psalms, but psalm for today, or the psalm for today, is, is a song that fits in with the way David wrote. David mm -hmm. wrote music for today, for tomorrow, for yesterday. That's right. Yeah. And the song that we're looking at today, Psalm 32, that we, was read, is a song, though, about a past, isn't it? Our yeah. past, right? right? His past. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it is the truth uh, that every one of us, we all have a past, don't we? Yeah. yeah. And if we live long enough, if, we're if honest. we look back and are honest, we yeah. know that there are things in our past that we regret. Skeletons oh. in the closet. That's right. Oh, they're for each of Things us. Things yeah. that we wish weren't there. Yeah. But nobody's perfect. That's right. right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And if we could live life over, I think a lot of us would want a lot of do-overs, right? right. Yeah. We would. And, and we, we all have words and actions and things that we have done that we wish we could take back. And we call that... Regrets. Regrets. Yeah. And that's we right. all have regrets. That's and true. David wrote a song that talks about um, how he found his way back from regrets. Mm -hmm. A redemption song, a song yeah. of restoration, and a song of reconciliation with yeah. God. Yeah. And a song of renewal that we're looking at today. David was looking back 
uh, kind of like in a rear view mirror, you know, he was, he was looking back at the, at all the terrible th- sins and things that he had committed, right. but also how God had redeemed him and right. restored him. And so this Psalm 32 that we're looking at today is an x-ray back into a forgiven heart. Yeah. And, and we know yeah. the story. I don't know if we've yeah. ever connected this story to mm. what he's singing about here mm-hmm. in Psalm 32. But David had committed adultery with another man's wife. He got her pregnant and then he uh, set him up to be killed. And, and so he murdered him and tried to hide all that he had done from God and from others for a long time. Mm-hmm. So it destroyed a lot of relationships. I mean, a marriage right. was destroyed. Uh, it shamed a king. Uh, it broke God's heart. Yeah. And then David realized that he he was the only one that was really at fault. Right, it was his fault. Mm-hmm. And the first step that we need to understand is um, to take, in order to get things right within ourselves and with God, is to recognize our sin. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Uh, not try to justify it or to... Um, you know, try to do away with it, but to confess it. Right. Uh, that's the first thing we need to do is recognize it and then confess it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. David did this. Right. He recognized his sin yeah. and he confessed it to God. Confessed yeah. it to the one he needed to, and it was God. And our psalm today is all about that. It's all about this process of restoring joy that comes from God's grace when we do confess it, when we do repent. Right. And confession is the start. Mm -hmm. Repentance is a response that we have to God's desire for us in our lives. That's right. And repentance is like turning away. It is uh, realigning our lives and turning away from our sin and trusting in God's grace, His forgiveness to make things all right. Yeah, Um, to make things right again. Again, right. And this week, uh, Psalm for Lent uh, that we have read, Mm -hmm. David is telling us uh, to plant our feet on the solid rock of forgiveness and to Mm -hmm. turn our sadness that comes from our sins by realizing our sins and to restore our joy by receiving the forgiveness of God. And it begins with repentance. That's right. And even though this Psalm of David, it's about a great sin, no doubt. It's about David's life, but it's not just a song of sadness but of gladness right? because it begins. If we look back and we see how right. this, this whole Psalm, it begins with the words, blessed is the one, and it ends then with this word, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, right. be joyful. Yeah. The reason why God had made him right was because he admitted that he had done wrong. Yeah. And if you know David's story, at first he tries to cover it up, uh, what he had did, and that didn't work for him very well. And we see that in verse 3 and 4. Right, and yeah. and we probably could relate to that if we right. try to cover up our own sins. It doesn't right. work out too well. And it says in that verse 3 and 4 that while he said, Jesus, confess, uh, Jesus, uh, David confesses, he says, while I kept silent, my body wasted away, though my groaning all day long. From day and night, your hand was heavy upon me, Lord. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Yeah. We all just try to sweep things under the rug in a sense. And how many times... Do we do something wrong and we try to analyze it away or rationalize away? Well, everybody's doing it. Yeah, that's you know? right. Yeah. We, we try to analyze saying, well, you know, it didn't really hurt anybody in the long run, right. you know. Then oftentimes we try to blame our problems on something or somebody <laughs> yeah. else. and right. uh, Because we live in a no-fault society. We do. Yeah. Uh, it's like... Um, this little boy, the story of this little boy, and he, he had gotten in fight with one of his classmates. They were fighting, and the teacher saw the fight, and of course she went right over there. And uh, she broke up the fight, and then she says, what is going on here? And the little boy said, 
It all started when he hit me back. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> it's kind of our culture, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it does. It yeah. says a lot about our culture right there. And David finally realized mm. we will never get clean until we come clean. True. That yes. God can ha, cannot clean us until we come clean yeah. and acknowledge our sin. Yeah. And here it is. Listen to the first two verses. Happy are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered up. Happy are those whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and those whose spirit, where there is no deceit. Yeah. And, uh, because it's it's one thing to understand the definition of sin or transgressions, but it's another thing to realize the depth of our sin. Yeah, and it's interesting. David, throughout the psalm, use, Psalms, uses three different words to describe different types of sin mm. that we commit within our lives. Uh, the many faults that we have. And the first is transgressions, and it literally means to trespass into forbidden territory. And what we see here is doing things that we're told not to do by God. Mm -hmm. And when we do something in which we should not do, that's a transgression. A sin, on the other hand, is not doing something that God calls us to do. Mm -hmm. And David defines that as well. The things that he knows God meant for him to do that mm -hmm. he denied doing. Mm -hmm. And in iniquity, it's interesting here because iniquity is when we pervert justice and pollute something with something bad that's meant to be good. Mm -hmm. And it's when we do that, we are committing an iniquity. And David talks about his transgressions, his sins and iniquities, mm -hmm. and oftentimes all three in the same psalm. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and so uh, to restore our joy, right. uh, to get our joy back in our lives, what, what we need to do is then is recognizing our sin and then confessing it and confessing it to God. And it's through this repentance, it's through turning away from what ha which has shamed us or that right. we feel shamed about. And then it, and then to turn around, to turn away from that, and then to turn to the one who heals us. That's right. And next, realizing that God has forgiven us mm -hmm. when we repent. That's right. Yeah. That's a big part, isn't it? It is, and that's a hard part. It is. It is sometimes. We, we want to hold on to that for some reason. We have a hard time letting go and forgiving mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but as we look again at this psalm that we're in Psalm 32, remember, uh, remember this is not a song of sadness. No, it is a song of gladness. I mean, yes, David was sad. He re he was really you know um, overcome by his faults and his sin, but he was even more overcome by his gladness that he was forgiven. Right, and. With all of our transgressions, sins, iniquities, God has the perfect remedy. And for every Jesus. spiritual sickness we That's suffer right. from, God has a spiritual cure. Mm -hmm. And it's the grace that God gives in the restoration through forgiveness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so here David sings a joyful song, doesn't he? Uh, and it's because he has embraced the concept of total and complete Forgiveness. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the word forgive literally means to carry away. Mm -hmm. uh, for us, it's what Christ has done. Christ has carried away our sin. Mm -hmm. um, you, have you ever heard of the term scapegoat? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> scapegoat, yeah. Yeah, scapegoat so is, is somebody. Is scapegoat? <laughs> yeah, a scapegoat for us is somebody who who takes a blame for something that you did that you you know, they aren't guilty of it, but you Like are. a fall guy. Yeah. But back in the day, the Jewish people, they would, uh, once a year when, you know, they'd sacrifice for their sins all the time. But once a year, the priest would lay his hands on a goat and, and confess the sins and the transgressions and iniquities of the whole community upon that goat and lay that on that goat mm -hmm. and then send it off in the wilderness to never be seen again. Mm -hmm. And that's what God does with our transgressions. He literally carries them away. away. That's yeah. Neat. Yeah. Uh, this is ironic though, Francis. Yeah. It is kind of ironic. 
Um, because when we try to cover up our sin, God reveals it. Right. But when we confess our sins, God conceals it. Right. And it's kind of ironic. You know the phrase, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Out of sight. As far as their east is from the west, yeah. right? God and, removes yeah. our transgressions yeah. from us. Yeah. And when Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, he carried them away. Mm. And God does not define us anymore by the sins that we've confessed. Mm. And, and this means that we receive God's grace and there's no need for us to keep holding on to that sin and letting it define us, but we can move ahead in God's grace. Mm -hmm. We are now transformed and we are no longer defined by our past. And, yes. and I love that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the reason why some of us, um, you know, sometimes uh, we're, we're forgiven, but we don't sometimes embrace that we don't feel like we are uh, because we keep trying to remember and to stir up the past right we keep trying to remember what God you know has has already forgotten right, right? he's and, forgotten it and we think we still have to cover it up and we've already <laughs> confessed it and God has it's forgiven covered. us yeah it is it is gone it is taken away Right. Yeah. I heard one time a story about a doctor, and uh, this guy comes into the doctor, and he says, Doctor, I need some help. And the doctor says, Well, what's wrong? And he says, Well, I'm suffering from amnesia. Mm. What should I do? And the doctor says, Well, go home and forget about it. <laughs> well, that's exactly what God does with our sins, and that's yeah. when we confess our sins to God. We just God to go home forgives. and forget about it. <laughs> go home. Don't, don't yes, dwell yeah. on that. Dwell yeah. on the good. Put on the joy that I'm restoring yes, in you. Right. And if God forgives us, so should we. We should also, right? Right. And that's what David is celebrating today in this psalm, mm. is the ability to receive this grace, this forgiveness from God, from mm -hmm. sins, transgressions, iniquities, and to be able to not let them define himself anymore, but find the joy that we can find in Christ. That's right. That's a good psalm. Yeah, that's what we're celebrating it's a, it's today. A good, it's a good promise at the beginning of Lent, too, when you think about it. This is a time when we really reflect back on the past mm -hmm. year, and if there's things we need to confess, confess them and repent mm -hmm. and move forward in joy toward the resurrection mm -hmm. that we celebrate on Resurrection Sunday mm -hmm. and our resurrection to come. So go out with joy as forgiven, forgiven people of God. Amen. Let's sing our closing benediction. Let's stand together and sing our closing benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. Thank you all. Thank, uh -huh. thank, thank you for being here.